I've received many requests to make rainbow cupcakes and looking through YouTube I can see that this really has been done to death. It's, so there's many many videos out there showing you how to do just that. So what I decided to do is to make rainbow cake in a jar and this was suggested to me by little Abigail123. So here we go. The recipe I'm using for vanilla cake is by Amy Sedaris from Epicurious. I'll put a link in the description box to that. The video, you'll see me make a half recipe, but I'll give you the full recipe ingredients. So in that large bowl, you place one and a half sticks of unsalted butter, which is three quarters of a cup of butter, and add to that one and a half cups of sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then cream those things together. Then you're gonna add the eggs. If I was doing a full recipe, there would be two eggs in that bowl. Blend in the eggs and then add two and a half cups of flour, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and one and a quarter cups of milk. Blend that all together and you get a nice thick batter. If you're using unsalted butter, add a quarter teaspoon of salt. But I was using salted butter, so I left it out. Divide that equally among six bowls. Then you're going to tint each of the batter segments a different color. I'm using only six colors for this rainbow as I don't have really have an indigo food coloring so I left that out. Then take the colored batter and place it in a piping bag. I put the piping bag in a measuring cup just to hold on to it. These piping bags have a sealed corner so I just cut the corner off to make a hole and prepared all of the colors that way. There are all the prepared colors. These are the jars I'm using. These are canning jars and these hold one cup or 250 milliliters. But you can use any size you want really. And then you're going to layer the colors of batter one at a time. I'm starting off with the violet or the purple at the bottom. And the layers I'm putting are about a half an inch thick approximately. And I'm doing one color at a time. I'm trying to make sure that the colors have contact with the outside of the jar, or the inside of the jar I should say, so that you can see the colors well and there's no air pockets. And continue on this way. You don't have to use piping bags, you can spoon the batter in, it's just a lot easier with a piping bag. I did not grease the jar because you're not taking the cake out of the jar, it doesn't have to come out cleanly, so there really is no point, plus it'll fog up the sides of the jar and I'll show you that a little bit later. Now basically what you're aiming for is once you have all of the colors put in the jar that the jar is basically about half full or just a little bit over half full. Then place the containers into a baking dish and you're going to add about a half an inch of water in the bottom of the pan and then you're going to bake these at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. I did a small half cup jar there you can see on the bottom right. Uh, that one will take less time of course. It took about 15 minutes to bake. And there they are out of the oven and cooled. And you can see how great they look. They do puff up a bit. Um, some of them will come up quite high in the jar. That's why you shouldn't go over the just a little bit over the halfway mark to make sure it doesn't come right out of the jar. And they're very interesting. You can still see the rainbow colors on the side of the jar, which makes them very attractive. Now this one's interesting. I was wondering why we needed a water bath. I thought that was kind of silly. Why do you have to put this in water? This is the reason. The water bath keeps the outside from browning quickly. So the one in the left, I took out of the water bath to see what would happen. And the one on the right stayed in the water bath. So you can see the difference in color. The outside of the cake gets brown if you take it out of the water bath. The inside's still nice, the colors are still vibrant, but the outside is just isn't as nice. Now if you find the cake has gone up a bit too far in the jar, you can just scoop out some of the cake at the top because you want to put some frosting in here if you'd like. And there are the colors, you can see how vibrant they are even though the, the outside of this one was a little bit brown. And then you can just decorate with buttercream frosting or whatever frosting you choose to use for this. This is plain old buttercream frosting. I'll put a recipe for that in the description box if you want to go click on the link to see how to make it. And then I added some rainbow sprinkles. 
So there are the completed rainbow cakes in a jar. And if you want to transport them, you can just put on the lids that these jars come with. And they're very easy to transport. But wait, you say, can I use a cake mix for this instead of a from scratch recipe? The answer is no, unless you want results like this. This is my first try. I used a white cake mix. And as you can see, it rises up a lot. The cake detaches from the sides of the jar. And because I greased the jar, the sides were quite hazy. And you can see the colors have a tendency to mix along the edges and you don't get a nice, really defined rainbow. That's because the batter that I was using with the cake mix was too thin. You need a nice thick batter for this to work well. Now from the inside, the cakes look very nice. You can see the rainbow colors in there. And it actually looks like a kind of like a volcano from the cross section. And you can see the purple and the green went up the sides of the jar and the red and the yellow stayed in the center and got kind of forced up to the surface. So the moral of the story is that cake mixes really aren't suitable for this kind of project. You need thick cake batter if you want to give these a try.